Hello, my name is Han Gerberg, and it is an honor to present our work here at Infocom. Today, I'm going to present our research in paper titled Joint Superposition Coding and Training for Federated Learning over Merge with Neural Networks. And the table of contents of this study is as follows. First, I will briefly explain the background knowledge, then I will go through the limitations. Thirdly, I will explain our proposed algorithm, then I will explain how we prove that our proposed method algorithm has successfully converged. Finally, I will summarize the results of the various experiments. And now let's look at the contents of the background. Uh, in this part, I will shortly introduce federated learning. Uh, unlike the current cloud-based learning, a federated learning directly conducts model learning in each local device. Then the parameter is shared and updated. The advantage of this method is that it has stronger security than cloud-based learning. This is because the output is transmitted in the form of the parameters. Additionally, federated learning also exploits the computing resources of multiple devices to the maximum instead of using only one super cloud computing. And since our proposed method integrates federated learning and slimmable neural networks, I will first briefly explain the process of federated learning. At first, each mobile device learns DNN independently and with a different data set, and this will be explained more in the next slide. And second, the parameters obtained by each mobile device are unlinked to the central cloud. And so parameters collected by the central cloud, central cloud server are integrated using a specific algorithm. And finally, the integrated parameters are downloaded and sent back to each mobile device. Uh, if the performance measurement index typically accuracy converges while looping the above sequence, we can conclude that federated learning has been successfully completed. Now I will explain about the non-IID data. Uh, let's look at the above diagram. Non-IID data is visualized according to the upper value using Dirichlet distribution. And the higher the upper value, the more uniformly distributed data received by each device so that it has the similar distribution as the IID environment, which means that there is no data imbalance. But the lower the upper value, the more data imbalance in each device, of course, and federated learning can solve this data imbalance with a specific control. And as you all know, the models width is an important factor in determining the performance of the model. The neural network in the middle circle is commonly used for full width neural network. And as the colors of the circle goes red or blue, we remove the respective half of the model to create different types of networks, the left-handed and full width and right-handed models. Uh, it is important to note that these three networks are not individually independent. They are different variations of the same full width neural networks. And for the next section, we will be discussing the limitations. Um, there are several limitations of running federated learning in real communication environments. Uh, as mentioned earlier, federated learning is based on the environment with a massive number of devices. And these devices have heterogeneous levels of available energies. Because of these devices with low energy levels are difficult to run the full model, and under time varying channel conditions, these devices also cannot unload the full model easily as well. Uh, let's talk about our proposed solution. We combine slim open neural network and federated learning on the superposition coding and successive decoding method. This enables devices to simultaneously unload their model parameters according to their channel conditions. Also, performing FL using a slim open neural network architecture enables the training of these two level models at once. And in this slide, we will directly compare the current FL, our proposed slim FL. Uh, vanilla FL uses DNNs and trains these networks with the vanilla training. However, our slim FL adopts SNN and trains the networks with the proportion training methods. And vanilla FL uploads the model with different transmission power. And our slim FL 
as the superposition coding and successive decoding method to this environment. When compared to the original FL on the left, uh, it failed to transmit parameters at the orange circle because the full width of the model uh, in a full communication environment could not be transmitted. Uh, on the other hand, half of the parameters were successfully transmitted to the server when SlimFL was used in the blue circle, which clearly shows the advantage of our proposed model. After that, our proposed algorithm, which can benefit from the communication environment, will be explained. Uh, let me introduce the communication modeling superposition coding and successive decoding used by our proposed model. At first, we set the signal to noise plus interference ratio SINR as the first equation. P is the transmission power, PR is received interference and sigma squared is the noise power and D represents the distance between the transmitter and receiver. Uh, by setting the SINR like this and adapting Shannon's capacity formula, the received throw foot R with the bandwidth W can be denoted as the second equation. Uh, with the preset environment that fully represents the realistic communication, we can get the decoding success probability as the final equation. Uh, U prime is the parameter about the code weight and bandwidth. And here we can observe that by balancing P, the success probability of transmission can be considered. And for successive decoding, at the model's receiver, the SC encoded message is supposed to be successively reconstructed by first decoding the stronger signal and then canceling out the reconstructed signal. When modeling, we implement our communication network with relay fading and the small scale fading power gain G. And it is assumed to have an exponential distribution and we implement, implement the final equation that represents the success probability of I message on our communication network. We can know that decoding of the next message is available only when the decoding of the previous message is successful. Uh, we implement these two communication methodologies into our proposed system. Uh, in short, we use proportion coding for encoding both left-handed motor and right-handed motor to transmit these models simultaneously. Then with the successive decoding, the receiver receives the left-hand motor and right-hand motor together, and they are sequentially decoded depending on the communication situation. So if the communication status is weak, then only one network, the left-hand motor is decoded. If there is a strong communication status, uh, then both left and right handed models are received and successive decoded in the devices and the cloud. And now we will be discussing about the proportion training method that was used to train the neural network of our slim FL. We utilize the knowledge distillation method in order to train the local model of each device, which compose the slim effort when they put together. Uh, the function f represents the cross entropy between the ground truth and the logic that pass the full stream of neural network. The f hat function represents the cross entropy between the logic that passes through the full width and the logic that passes through the ice slim of neural network. Uh, with this, we are able to we are able to use in-place knowledge distribution, IPKD, because we can transmit the information of full width to the slim of neural network of the eye width. Based on the assumption, we applied the local SNN update rule in order to use the respective knowledge distillation method. In other words, gradient using function F hat and F is integrated to update the local SNN. And this is the overview of our proposed algorithm that is on the wireless federated learning environment with proportion coding and successive decoding. We first use the local training method mentioned above to update the local model. Then next step, 
then the next step changes according to the communication state of each device. When the communication state is good, in good condition, the blue box becomes the next step where all the parameters are received. However, if the communication state is bad, the orange box becomes the next step in which only half of the parameters are received. Um, the process is implemented through the S SCSD method. Um, um, for briefly, uh, the in good conditions devices use the blue, the blue boxes, and uh, in the bad conditions of devices use the orange boxes. After that, the global parameter is updated by aggregating the respectively received parameters via the averaging method. Fed average method is the popular method to aggregate these parameters. Finally, all the parameters are fully transmitted to each local device because there is enough power in the cloud during the downlink. In this section, we will prove the successful convergence of our proposed model and continue to explain the conclusions of this paper. Uh, at the left side, we made three assumptions then, and through this, we defined Turema at the right, right side of our convergence analysis of our slim affair. And this and these lemmas. And in the further detail, the three assumptions above are the most commonly used assumptions for the convergence analysis of federated learning. We refer to various papers to formulate these assumptions. Uh, through the air simultaneous assumption, uh, mu strong convex the assumption, and the bounded local gradient variance assumption in the green boxes, we were able to come up with two lemma in the blue boxes. In short, the first lemma says that the error between the updated global model and its optimum progresses is. An upper bound when learning weight is smaller than the over L, one over L. And this second lemma means that variance FT is bounded. And P1 and P2 represents decoding success probability, RH and RH segments respectively. We've proved and carried out the analysis of convergence of our proposed lemma based on the lemma and the assumptions which were introduced in the previous slide. As a result, uh, we learned that as time to increase, the gap between the optimal objective function decreased. Most importantly, uh, B is composed of one over P1 plus one over P2. And this tells us that RH segment, left-handed segment, and the right-handed segment have identical influence over the convergence of our slim FL. Therefore, we can learn that the decoding success rate of one at pro-channel condition will be extremely low. And it can be complemented by increasing the frequency of 0.5 model, half model. Uh, this shows that the performance of this model is robust even in pro-channel conditions. Uh, let's examine the situation where full model is almost impossible to decode it because of bad communication state stations. Uh, this means that P2 equals zero and P1, P1 is larger than zero. And in such conditions as uh, B diverges. And finally, we discussed Delta, which is a parameter related to non-IID environment, even in moderately pro channel uh, by looking at the equation, we can know that the model is robust against non-IID data, even if channel condition is moderately, moderately poor. And for the next section, we will explain the part of the extensive experiments we carried out and learn about the gains obtained through the experiments. Um, before explaining our experimental results, let's see our communication environments. Uh, our goal is to enable each device to obtain large and small models to cope with its large and small energy levels. Uh, in the future, uh, we also implement the vanilla FL, which runs separately on a fixed width, 
vanilla ever fixed width of uh, half and full width, not the slim of neural network, but the original deep neural network. Uh, in our slim affair, by leveraging slim of neural networks with this proportion coding and successive decoding, we simultaneously exchange and train the different widths, which are half width and full width. And to explain clearly, the half width represents the left-handed, uh, the red boxes in the previous slide, and the full width represents the center circle neural network of uh, previous slide. And the non-IID feature is controlled by Dirichlet distribution. Here, I will discuss the two major results of our research. Scalability is one of the most important quality factors of federated learning. We observed that as the number of federating devices increases, the accuracy of slim FL improves. And not only the full width network, but half width network also shows the improvement of accuracy. In addition, using the red dotted line is used as the baseline, which uses over 70 federating devices. The half, the half width slim effect shows higher accuracy than the accuracy of a full width slim effect using 30 federating devices. And we think that it is impressive that optimality can be obtained by adjusting the number of local devices and the width through slim effect adaptation when FI system is configured based on non IID data sets. And we comfort the robustness of slim affairs non-IID data through experiments. Uh, the graph shows the top one accuracy graphs when half width and full width of slim affair and vanilla affair are placed in each communication situation respectively. Also, in the first laws of graphs, we use alpha equals zero, alpha equals one, representing data set, data set distribution is on IID environment. And the graphs below, we use RPI equals 0.1 as the data set distribution is on the severe non IID data set. A slim affair, 0.5 half with slim affair, shows a stable convergence uh, under the conditions of ARPA. On the other hand, vanilla affair showed unstable confidence as communication situation worsened. And in our paper, we propose a novel framework, framework of FL over a slim of neural networks by developing its proposition training and exploiting its proposition coding for the trend model aggregation. And verify that slim FL is a communication and energy efficient solution under various communication environments and data distribution. I also, introduce, I also want to introduce the possible future researches as follows. And we will conduct structure, mathematical application research for the future. And lastly, and this is the final slide of our research. And if you have any questions, please contact or email me. Thank you.